Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today on equality, diversity, and inclusion in action, uh, as delivered by the Bedford College Group. Before we get started, I just want to do a few introductions. So today we've got Emma Lowe, who's the Vice Principal of the Bedford College Group. We've got Anastasia Parsons, who is our Diversity and Inclusion Advisor at the Bedford College Group, and Caroline Biddle, Biddle who is the HR Director at the Bedford College Group as well. And then you have some familiar faces, myself, Greg Guilford, the CEO of HR Solutions, Victoria Templeton, our HR Knowledge Manager, and Atima Arden, our Digital Marketing Executive. So throughout the session, we, we encourage questions, but obviously everyone is on mute so that um, we, there's no disruptions to the presentation, but we will have a pause at the end of the session where we will take the questions that have been asked throughout the session. Those of you who have been on our webinars before, hopefully you're familiar with the GoToWebinar question panel. Those of you that's first time, you should see something that looks very similar to what's on the screen, where you can uh, ask questions as we go along. And if you put, put your questions in there, we will answer them at the end of the session. If there's a technical question that you have, we'll answer them as we go along as well. We also try to make these webinars as interactive as possible, so we will do some polls as we go through, and you'll see a pop-up that comes up on your screen, and you just simply click the option that's most relevant to you. So before I hand you over to the Bedford College group, I will do a few polls to sort of get the session going. So you'll see these pop up on your screen. So the first poll we have is who has performance objectives in relation to EDI in your organization? So you've got a number of options there. The CEO, senior management, all managers, everyone or no one. Okay, quite a few of you have voted, but there's still a few to go, so I'm just going to get a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to start to close the poll and just share those results. You should see those on your screen. So, uh, interestingly, no one's ticked CEO. 10% um, of you have put senior management, 30% all managers, 30% everyone, and then 30% no one, um, which is quite, quite interesting. So now I'm just going to do the next poll. Just to understand how many of you have an EDI committee in your organization, and quite simply, this is yes or no. Okay, most of you have voted, so I'm going to close the poll. Bit of an interesting result, this one, where it's 50-50, yes and no, so um, quite quite a split vote there. And then the last poll is, does the decision-making process in your organisation consider the impact on minority groups and have equitable outcomes? And quite simply, yes or no. Okay, most of you have voted, so I'm just going to close that poll. Interestingly, this, this result is slightly different to the committee results. So 67% have said yes and 33% said no, which uh, is quite good considering um, some of you don't have committees uh, to help drive that. Okay, I'm now going to pass you over to uh, Emma Lowe, who's going to start the presentation. Thanks, Greg. Morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for inviting us today. Uh, my name's Em Lowe. And I'm Vice Principal at the Bedford College Group. Um, what we're just going to try and share with you this morning is our journey over the last few years in terms of promoting equality and diversity and inclusion across the group. Next slide, please, Greg.
so um, back in 2017, Bedford College merged with Tresham College. So um, Bedford's in is in Bedford, um, as it states on the tin, um, and Tresham College, some of you will be familiar with, is based in Kettering and Corby, and we've got a new site opening in Wellingborough, uh, and we merged into 2017. So I'll just talk a little bit about Bedford College before the merger. Um, we always did have an equality and diversity group, um, and that was really trying to give a general steer in terms of you know, the equality and diversity priorities in the college, uh, and was very much more focused on um, embedding equality and diversity within teaching, learning and assessment and how we were working with students and perhaps less about working with our own staff. Uh, the membership was more based on volunteers who had an interest in inclusion and diversity and we didn't always have then because of that across college representation of all key areas. Um, therefore sometimes it meant that it, it lacked, um, le lacked holding leaders to account in regards to equality and diversity, and we couldn't always drive through the improvements and implement the change that we wanted to. So following the merger in 2017, that gave us a great opportunity to relook at that and look at what Tresham had done previously as well and kind of bring the best of those things to do things together. So we then completely revamped the equality and diversity group. And that's how the uh, EDI committee came to existence. And that's been since October 2017. Uh, we critically changed who the chair was and the membership so that you very much ensured that all key areas were uh, represented and at the, at the right level as well so that we could really make decisions and move things forward. We also changed to where it reported to so that it used to report to our, our governors via our uh, quality standards and achievement committee and now actually we report direct to the board itself because it is a strategic matter. Um, and the annual report, our annual equality and diversity report that gets published each year, we have now brought in line with our other key areas of when we review our academic year so that those targets and that progress is measured alongside other departments in the college. Next slide please. Hi from me, I'm Anastasia and I'm a diversity and inclusion advisor at the Bedford College Group. I'm going to say a few words about how the committee um, is organised, its purpose and membership. So the committee has a number of purposes and the first one is the monitoring one. Uh, the committee monitors the EDI priorities of the college and the progress on individual actions and their impact. The committee also steers the direction that the college takes, what we need to focus on to improve the service delivery. Uh, and applying an EDI lens to all college functions and identifying areas for improvement. The committee also acts as a critical friend and what that means is that committee members focus on the individual issues uh, in various areas and cross college so they provide an external or fresh look a data system, policies, procedures and consistency in practice and finally the committee also provides a route for engagement of and access to the executive team. This is the overall purpose of the EDI committee. In terms of membership uh, there is a core membership and that includes the directors and the heads of all quality all college functions. For instance we have uh, the director of human resources uh, then we have the director of student services, quality, the head of marketing, apprenticeships, business development, student data, estates and facilities. We have two heads of teaching teams from different campuses to ensure that cross-college representation and student reps. The attendance for core members of the committee is mandatory and we expect that all people to attend and if they can't attend, all members should have a deputy would attend the report in their absence. And members are also expected to act as a role model and they need to champion inclusion and diversity in their area. The committee is chaired by the vice, one of the vice principals, and that's in low. We also have a governor in attendance, who provides the link with the top of the organization and some external input. We also have guests coming to the committee uh, for instance, we have representatives of staff forums and various groups and student union representatives. Next slide, please.
a few words about how the committee is organized and how it works. Um, we have a very clear structure and a plan for the academic year. The committee meets five times in an academic year and it follows a work schedule. Um, that means that there are key areas that we need to scrutinize at each meeting. So members of the committee know in advance what will happen in each meeting and that way they can prepare. So for instance, in some meetings we'll focus more a little bit more on teaching and learning. In some other uh, meetings, we can focus more on student recruitment, maybe apprenticeship recruitment, stakeholder feedback, complaints, marketing, professional development, surveys, uh, whether staff student surveys, equal pay, etc. etc. We also have standard agenda items, and these are the overarching college priorities in terms of EDI and they specifically focus on student achievement, student experience and our workforce. We spend quite a bit of time working with directors and heads of department to give them support in terms of preparing for the committee and what they present to the committee. So they expect it to submit their reports two weeks prior to each meeting to allow the committee members to read through the reports become familiar with the data and formulate any questions or recommendations. Um, so directors or heads of departments who are reporting to the committee are very clear about what's expected from them. So we really don't want a chapter and verse and all the details about their department, but we want them to be very specific and concise. We want them to talk about the metrics, but it's more about analyzing the metrics and maybe pulling out some themes and patterns highlighting these and then identifying key outcomes of EDI monitoring in their areas and actions for development and improvement. So this process, I feel, and that's what uh, committee members commented on, have helped them become more aware of how an EDI lens uh, helps them to focus more on improvement of their service delivery. And finally, we also do an evaluation of the committee at the end of each academic year, the committee's members complete the self-reflection survey to look at the committee's effectiveness in terms of four areas, how we are supporting the college's strategic and EDI priorities, the representation and inclusion of different groups of stakeholders, how the committee is organized and its impact, whether in individual areas or across the college. Okay. Next slide, please. Good morning. So you've now moved on to Caroline Biddle and um, initially I'm going to be looking at impact because one of the key areas of a good strategy is seeing the impact it makes. Otherwise, it's just completely tokenistic. So we've highlighted some of the key impacts the Bedford College Group are seeing. And the first one, perhaps most important, is a culture change in that EDI is being recognised as an integral part of all college functions and leaders of individual functions becoming more aware of how EDI applies to their areas and also how it contributes to the overall quality improvement of the college and service delivery. All the college policies have an EDI impact assessment and responsibilities of all levels are clearly laid out in EDI specific ones as well. Um, representation and inclusion um, is key in decision making and the EDI committee has a more diverse profile in terms of equality strands and input from all college functions. We also have really improved cross-college collaboration in terms of EDI and that is both in areas of a strong stakeholder involvement but also having one goal. So one of our key um, values is student experience. And by having one goal, we look at improving the student experience through an EDI lens and from many different perspectives. So we look at bullying, we look at feeling safe, we look at the sense of belonging, um, we look at disciplinary actions, counselling support, LGBT+, support officers, complaints, um, staff diversity as well, and particularly how well our employment workforce reflects the local communities in which we're working. And we also have supportive structures and processes that have been put in place right across the college. 
finally for impact um, has been external recognition and the college has achieved both bronze and silver accolades from Stonewall for being a college champion for LGBT plus inclusion and we're now working towards goal. We also had really, really positive feedback from Ofsted when we had our latest inspection in September. I had to think when it was then, it feels like so long ago with COVID. Okay, can we move on to the next slide? So once you have the impacts, the important thing is then keeping EDI in focus and, and how do we do that? And so there are several strands and those start with the EDI champion model. Um, at the college, we've developed and embedded an EDI champion model at different levels. And this is a network of team-based diversity ambassadors, uh, executive sponsors as well for disability, ethnicity, LGBT plus and women and staff diversity groups right across the board. We've also developed an EDI information hub on the staff intranet. So this can be an article on latest news so obviously at the moment there's an awful lot going on with Black Lives Matter um, so we have an awful lot of information coming through uh, links to other resources to help people and also as well highlighting within the college calendar key EDI um, sort of specific dates could be a religious festival could be Black History Month all those sorts of things so keeping everything very high profile and in the eye line of the workforce We've also developed a system for regular EDI updates throughout the college using the staff newsletter and the diversity ambassadors. So our staff newsletter has a dedicated page to EDI and Anastasia puts a number of articles and areas of interest each month on that. Um, and also our diversity ambassadors all receive updates on a regular basis from Anastasia and they cascade those throughout their teams and also highlight other things as we've talked about on the intranet or any other area. We've also developed EDI standards for teaching areas with implications for a range of college functions such as marketing, staff recruitment, um, facilities, professional development and the like. And these standards are being integrated in quality interventions and improvement planning. Um, so we have an inter internal benchmarking and ensure consistency across the college. And finally, it's having role in theme specific professional development in the area of EDI. So we have a number of courses very clearly um, focused on EDI, but also we develop new things all the time. So recently we've been talking about unconscious bias. Uh, so not only having training on that, but ensuring that it's actually a thread that runs through all training. So whatever, if we're training on recruitment, there's a key area on how unconscious bias can affect that um, if it was assessment the same thing and that ensures that we're consistent across the board okay next slide please okay so what you can see here is just a diagram just trying to demonstrate how the communication reporting works for the EDI committee so this was a new structure and this was to really ensure involvement at all levels and also to make sure it was a two-way process so that it was inclusive so that information can go up and down and across um, and what you'll see is that the top is the corporation, so our board of governors, um, and then going down to the college executive, then going into the committee or, or vice versa back up. And then feeding into that, then we've got the diversity ambassadors and we've also got a number of staff diversity groups. Um, and these groups have been developed based on feedback from staff of what they would like. So uh, um, we've currently got LGBT plus. Um, and a women's group set up and we're working on developing an ethnicity and disability group. Um, but it, and they really act as a support group for staff, but it ought, they're also a way that we can get some key messaging and change policy within the organisation by hearing it from the people actually on the ground who live in that in a day to day. Uh, we're also working with the student union as well to make sure that we're including student feedback um, as well as, as obviously they are a key customer of ours to make sure that obviously as we make decisions as an organisation, they are inclusive, but also are making sure that we're promoting equality and diversity wherever we can. Next slide, please. So finally, just to recap, um, 
the key sort of strategic decisions we made were that leaders and managers were to take a lead in equality and diversity and inclusion. Um, and just to say, really, we are on a journey. We're definitely not saying we've got reached, reached our destination. However, we do feel like we're going in the right direction and we can measure a lot of impacts that we've done even just in the last three years. Um, critically, EDI is not an add-on. Um, and again, that's more even more embedded in some areas than others. And that is really important that we continue to change that culture. Um, and upskill people, but also educate them, because I think it's very easy if you've only got one perspective yourself to not be able to see from other people's perspectives. So we spend quite a lot of time trying to put staff and students in a position where they can see how it might be for other people um, when they might not, you know, they might not be in a perhaps a minor, minority group themselves. Um, really critical that we continue with our diversity champions and also allies at all levels. So all of the staff groups I just talked about, actually, although it's a women's group, that doesn't mean that men are excluded. They absolutely can attend as well. It's, but it's about focus on issues that affect women. Same for the LGBT plus. You don't have to be LGBT plus to be in the group, um, but it's about having allies there. And obviously, again, that helps uh, increase people's perspective of others. Um, and really, the, the key thing is that we are continuing to keep it high on our agenda at all meetings. Um, the board gives us great support with that as well. Um, and we are working, as always, with, with all areas of the college, really, to remind them and always just keep asking those questions. But from an equality and diversity perspective, what might that mean? Is this inclusive for everyone? Does this promote equality and diversity and that understanding so that we you know can start to change that culture not just within the organization but particularly for our students outside as they go on and progress into university or jobs um, i hope that's been helpful um, and i'll pan back to greg to see if there are any questions thank you uh, thanks em uh, caroline and anastasia um there are a couple of questions come through i'm um, I'll ask the question and maybe you can choose who answers it um, or, or maybe a mixture of, of all of you. Um, so some of the questions you, you might have slightly covered um, with, with some of your slides, but one of the questions was, how does EDI get raised to the CEO or board? What kind of information are you, are you sharing with them? Anastasia, do you want to talk about that or do you want me to? I can start. Um... Um, can say a little bit about the updates we provide. So we have a very clear cycle of updates to the executive team, and that includes the CEO and all the senior managers. So after the EDI committee, the committee meets five times a year. I provide the summary and recommendations for improvement, and that um, is taken to the executive team, one of their meetings, and also by the same channel, uh, I provide updates to the board. Um, I'll add to that as well. So Caroline and myself are part of the executive. Um, we both report into the CEO, so we are obviously um, feeding that in as well. Um, and then the reports that we take through to the board um, are on a regular basis, really talking about what progress we're making, where we might be facing some challenges, um, but also even in, in the other committees. So, for example, for the Quality Standards and Achievement Committee, um, where information is relevant from an EDI perspective. So, for example, if we're talking about student achievement, we would also be talking about that through an EDI lens as well. So we're trying to embed it throughout. That's great. Um, one of the other questions was about what type of activities are on your work schedule that you have at your committee? Shall I, shall I start with the HR ones? So the ones I know best, obviously. So there's, it's split into different um, functions. Um, so within HR, uh, we have been looking at various areas, including how we gather um, information. So one of the key things that was um, influenced from the EDI committee on that was Previously, it had been pretty standard, um, sort of the tick, tick box of different categories. Um, so people either filled it out or chose not to engage in it at all. Um, and the EDI committee have influenced the prefer not to say um, approach as well. So we're, we're now looking at ways that we can increase awareness that people can still, in, you know, engage with that. Um, 
but actually state that actually this is something they would prefer to be private because there is a lot of we had a really brilliant discussion at our edi committee before last about how that people actually just want certain things to be private they don't want them to be work related so it's not that they're withholding but they feel they have to fill things out otherwise they look like they're withholding so it's actually as i say the edi committee by considering those things and analysing them and, and having them on the workplace um, plan has influenced change. Other areas we look at there are areas mainly surrounding recruitment um, and policy. And as I said um, in my slide, one of the key things we're looking at now is the journey from applicant to new starters. Um, and if there's any bias or, or any sort of negative trends that we need to consider. And those obviously will then influence recruitment policy and strategy within the HR function. Um, I don't know, Em, shall I hand back to you if you want to touch on any other areas? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we have, um, as uh, Caroline said, we obviously have, have staff focus. We also have a student focus um, and also some of our support function focuses as well. And, and what we try and do is use data to our feedback in order to then direct what is in our single equality scheme and therefore what's in our action plan. So to give you an example, when uh, coming to this time of year, we'll have started to look at students' results um, and what we'll be looking to see, is there any gaps? Um, and that might be by ethnicity, it might be by gender, age, disability, uh, sexuality, any of those different things. And then from that, then we'll then discern, we'll look at that, compare that against our, our progress as an organisation, but then we'll also look at the benchmarking nationally when that is released. And then to put in actions in place if we see that, see if that gap is something that is EDI related or actually it's another circumstance that's impacted. Um, so it is are ever changing and we have actions per year but also we have a three-year rolling plan so that we're not losing sight because obviously as you can imagine some things take quite a while to embed or to turn around um, so that's really important um, one of the other key things we're looking at, at the moment is our apprenticeship recruitment um, and particularly in different sectors so um, probably no surprise to anyone but um, construction tends to be quite a male dominated industry um, and so some of the challenges we look at is well how do we try and influence that by looking at how we can encourage more women or ethnic groups into that, to that industry so that we can start to change things uh, from the inside out really so they're the sort of things we focus on. That's great thank you and sort of just following on from that do, do you have an idea of what what has been the biggest impact on increasing awareness of EDI in the college? Is there one single thing you could say was the uh, biggest impact? I, I think constantly banging on about it um, is really key. I think we did a lot around LGBT plus um, and we got a lot of feedback from students and staff. Um, I think generally people feel a bit more comfortable with visible difference but when it becomes an invisible difference they struggle with that a little bit more and I think LGBT plus is a good example of that. Um, and from that group, we've now got a staff group who work really well together and support each other, but I've also really um, led to uh, as achieving the silver in Stonewall. And I think getting that um, that sort of recognition really helps staff and students to know, that, you know, that we are trying to be an inclusive organisation. Um, because of that as well, we've been able to have guest speakers from Stonewall. Um, and we've also last year introduced LGBT support officers. So. We've got members of staff who are LGBT plus themselves that are willing to then be a point of contact for students who might well be struggling with their identity at the moment and want to talk to someone who's perhaps been through it themselves, not just a member of staff who, who, who again, can't necessarily give them that perspective. So that's just one example of what we've done. That's, that's I'd, I'd just, sorry, I'll just um, add to that as well. I think I'm the, I'm the newer person in the team. I've only been at the Bedford College group a year. And I think uh, one of the key things is the actual culture of um, education, which I suppose is unsurprisingly of being a college, but quite often when you have educational environments, it is all about the, the students and not about the, the wider college. And I think that there is a real culture of um, you know, enabling people to to see different perspectives, to have that cognitive empathy, um, to understand 
uh, you know, why things can be more difficult for some people. Um, em talked in, in the last question about data, and you know, one of the things I'm I, I'm not fond of data if it doesn't mean anything. And one of the things I do see with the EDI committee is that actually, you know, the, the data is used, and the data is not just to tick a box and report. It actually says, okay. So that there seems to be an issue there. Why is there an issue? What is the barrier? How do we overcome that barrier? Um, so it's, a, it's that constant learning environment. I'd like to add to that uh, something. Um, from my point of view, I really support everything that's been said so far. But one key improvement is this wider involvement of all staff, whereby people have a voice. People have a voice and their voice is heard. So, for example, we have the um, LGBT staff forum and they have made recommendations to the committee in terms of trans inclusion and as a result of all the work done in that area and consultation with staff and students, we have made changes in terms of um, support for students, we have very clear guidance for staff and policy on supporting transgender students and members of staff. We have improved our data systems and how uh, personal details of students can be changed on the data system. So the system works really smoothly, uh, fast, free. Um, there's no issues and it's very easy experience and friendly and comfortable for the student. That was the main outcome from this. Another example is all the recommendations that have come so far from the Women's Staff Forum, uh, whereby we made recommendations to the committee and these are moving forward in terms of support for menopausal women or experiences supporting women from minority ethnic groups and another example is where we're working together with our fellowship group and we've developed a religion and belief policy so i think the main outcome from this is people uh, members of staff can see that they their voice is heard and they can influence change in the organization that's great thank you very much i've just got one final question and then um we'll, we'll... We'll close the question section. Um, so this question is, what is the best way to get honest feedback from students at the college in your opinion? So I guess that's in, in terms of them giving you feedback on the performance of EDI and, and or any concerns that they have? Uh, generally, students are quite good at letting us know what they think, uh, to be honest. Um, but we do do um, surveys that are, are, are anonymous. Um, so although we collect their EDI data, we don't necessarily identify them so that, that it takes away any barriers that might exist there. Um, we also, all our full-time 16 to 18 students have personal tutors who they can go to at any time. Uh, we have a have you say system where students can provide suggestions or ideas. So um, we have a lot of mechanisms really to try and collect that. We've also got the student union and they have a, a quality and diversity uh, members within that so they have a lead and those people ideally come to the EDI committee or if they can't they will provide feedback from the student perspective so that that's really important as we move forward because sometimes decisions we think make sense uh, you know we need to make sure that that makes sense from a student perspective as well that's great thank you um, so I'm going to close those questions now. If um, anybody does have any further questions, um, then you can email us at inquiries at hrsolutions-uk.com and we'll either field those or we'll, we'll go to the Bedford College group and ask them for their input as well. Um, as with uh, our normal webinars, we uh, tend to signpost our upcoming webinars as well. So we've been doing quite a few throughout COVID. Um, the ones we have scheduled is managing diversity in the workplace which is next week uh, the future of work new employment practices in august and conflict resolution in september uh, please do check back because we will be adding a few more webinars uh, in between those events uh, over the next week or so as well to make sure you stay up to date with the invites then if you are not already on our newsletter then please do sign up and the web address is on the screen but we will follow up this webinar with a link to, to that uh, newsletter as well. Equally, we have recorded this webinar as, as we do with all of our webinars and they are available on our webinar archive page and a link to that will be uh, sent 
following this webinar as well. We've done quite a few webinars, as I mentioned earlier, and there's just quite a, a sample of those on the screen at the moment. But um, yeah, please do have a look at them at your leisure. That just leaves me to say a uh, final thank you to uh, our panelists, uh, M. Lowe, uh, Anastasia Parsons, and Caroline Biddle from the Bedford College Group. Thank you for your insights into quality and diversity in action. I'm now going to close the webinar.